Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. Welcome back to theCUBE's continuing coverage of AWS reInvent 2017. We're live from Las Vegas, day three. There's still a ton of people here. We have uh, a great guest next that we're excited to talk about. Mark Kelly, the Director of Cloud and Infrastructure Ser uh, Services Architecture, talking with myself, Lisa Martin, and my co-host, Stu Miniman. Mark, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, glad to be here. So Scripps Networks, tell us a little bit about that. I know a few things, HGTV, Food Network, I watch those a lot, but tell us a little bit more about Scripps Network. So Scripps, when I say that name, most people do not know it, but we are the leading provider of home, food, and travel uh, content for broadcast, the web, and for emerging technologies at this point in time. So we've got a lot of brands in our umbrella. You said HGTV, we've got Food Network in there, Cooking Channel, DIY Network, Great American Country, and Travel Channel. Yeah, so Mark, I, I know my family binges a lot of these shows, Absolutely. so uh, take right. us a little bit, you know, what, what's happening in that industry today? Say, you know, binging versus, you know, watching online, cloud, digital, um, the, the, the joke of course is that at least things are you know, pretty stable and not changing in your world, right? Oh no, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it is uh, changing on a very rapid pace, so as more and more people, you know the big buzzword is that cord cutting thing. We've got big concern in our, in our industry around that, but as more and more people uh, talk about it, we're adapting our technologies to be there just to provide for them. So we're on those emerging technologies. We're on all of the you know, set-top boxes, Apple TV, Roku. We're actually developing networks specifically for those technologies. So we're trying to adapt. The broadcast world is still our bread and butter. So until we figure out the, the revenue models for these new technologies, we're, we're going to be in the broadcast world for right. some time. So Mark, talk to us a little bit about what's your role there. You've been there six years, I believe you said. How has kind of cloud changed the, the way Scripps works? So cloud has definitely changed the way we work. You know, when I first came on board, we were looking, or Scripps was looking for a way to uh, move the business faster. You know, Scripps, because it's changing so rapidly, they're in the business that they have to compete with startups. And when they're competing with startups, startups don't have the same processes and controls around everything that, that uh, the bigger enterprises do. So it was an extreme challenge to them. And you know, when they don't understand, they don't have budget concerns like big enterprises either. When I go in to do a project to launch a new network, they don't understand it. I've got to buy hundreds of thousand dollars worth of hardware or whatever associated with it. So when we were looking at the cloud, we needed a ways to uh, accelerate that. We wanted to make the business process much quicker. We, were, uh, we weren't going to have those lead times for purchasing hardware, purchasing software, getting licensed, you know, racking it, stacking it, doing all that. We were looking to ways to move that out of the way so everybody could focus on providing more value for the business. And that was the primary reason we actually started looking at the cloud. So from a, uh, an end user goal perspective, obviously you mentioned speed and having to compete with, um, with other networks and, and other um, native right. um, original content companies. How does the end user's demand for 24 by 7 content, how does that drive really the pace of innovation that Scripps has to, has to meet? Yeah, that, that is a very good question. I think we're still trying to figure that out because the, the whole consumption method for all of our, all of our end, end, end users is changing. You know, if they're going from their traditional TV to where they're watching it on their phone to switching to their iPad to everything else in between. So we're developing technologies and methods so that we're providing it for them as they, as they need it and want it, so. Yeah. Mark, Mark, can you give us a snapshot of what does your infrastructure look like today? What, what are kind of the major things that have changed and what, yeah. what's kind of on the table? So yeah. today we are running about 3,000 instances in AWS. So AWS is our primary cloud provider. We run a lot of auto scaling uh, to, to, to take into account our seasonal loads. That's probably one thing that we, one of the challenges we had going into the cloud is that we, we were up against you know, certain times of the year where the load was extremely high, but it was only extremely high for you know, a couple of weeks. I mean, literally we were running at two to 300% of what normal was, and, and it would do it for two or three weeks, so we were having to purchase hardware in advance for that, and it would just sit there idle for the rest of the year. So we were looking for ways to, to avoid that excess purchase and still scale to support our, our uh, consumers' and needs. So we've, when you 
you know, when you started this journey, and we were talking to uh, Veeam earlier about um, cloud isn't a destination, you get there, great, you're done. But when you start this journey, you mentioned AWS and we're here at reInvent, where did you start? What, what were some of the stakeholders that you, <laughs> on the business side, that you Absolutely. had to say, all right guys, let's come to the table. We have um, a great opportunity here right. to, uh, this, this industry's transforming as you know, the joke Stu made earlier. Where did you start with those business dis discussions? So, I think it was, more around you know, trying to figure out that solution. It was like when I said earlier, we we're trying to get to, to market quicker. So it was easier to go to the stakeholder and said, hey, I think I can go this route, and I think I can get you to market twice as fast. And Your ears you get, perk up? Oh, absolutely, <laughs> ears would perk up, eyes would light up, and you're like, really? And they're like, how much more is it going to cost me? And I'm like, I don't think we're going to, and then when we present the, you know, the on-demand cost models, like, I think we don't have to do all these big upfront costs, and that got a little bit more excitement out, out of the, the uh, Bit stakeholders, and we went went forward from there. So we would. Um, it took a while. No, don't don't get me wrong. Everybody gets gets set in their ways. They want to do things normally. Change sometimes is hard, difficult to push through. Absolutely, cultural so, change. Very absolutely. very challenging. So it is a complete cultural change to go from your traditional on-premise to the cloud model, where you're you're not managing the hardware as much. You're focusing on the engineering around it. Yeah. So, so, so Mark, you bring up managing, you know, monitoring something that, that's yep. going to ch change very differently. Talk a little bit about your people, you know, the, the skill sets they had to change, uh, you know, what's the differences kind of before, during, and after uh, that migration? So, uh, beforehand, we, when we were on, on, in our on-premise environment, we were focused on uh, tool sets for monitoring and uh, managing our infrastructure that were very vast. I mean, we had a large number of them. One of our goals moving to the cloud was to consolidate that tool set. We wanted to get down to a minimal set that actually would, uh, would accomplish our goals to get everything that we needed. So we didn't have to go through training people to learn 50 different tool sets for monitoring whatever it was, network equipment, storage equipment, or the compute, compute equipment. We were actually focusing on monitoring our applications and still getting some of that underlying infrastructure reporting on our monitoring, but we didn't have to have the same level where we were monitoring the hypervisors, we were monitoring the network switches, that, that kind of went away. So our focus became more on the operating system up and engineers developed. You know, they didn't have, no longer had to focus on that hardware. Yeah, so, so what, what are you using for that? You know, how many people does it take to, to do that? You know, if it could kind of, so you know, every, compared we, to what you had before, yeah. Our standard, our standard monitoring suite is actually composed of New Relic. New Relic has been a great partner for us. They had the same mindset as us. You know, we were looking to compete with the startups at the time New Relic was a startup, because we've been using them for five, between five and six years now. Uh, we brought them in because they had that same hunger and mentality that we were looking for. Their, their culture matched really well. And we got in and, and deployed all of their, their suites uh, to every environment. We actually leverage it in, from development up through production. So we try not to separate our monitoring. We try to keep it all uniform. So our troubleshooting gets a lot more, lot simpler. We actually uh, have the same people monitoring our dev stacks that are monitoring our production stacks, so they can troubleshoot and help get through there. It became a lot easier for them to do that. Yeah, I, I, did you talk about kind of how many people you had kind of managing infrastructure before versus the monitoring and you know some of the training that they had to go through? Or so uh, before it was all specialized people. I don't even have that. I couldn't even give you the, the headcount because I mean most of that was before my time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but every individual was actually specialized on each application for monitoring. So it was actually teams that would focus on each part of the business. So as we migrated into cloud, we became more standardized, made it simpler. We actually have our, my cloud team uh, is really between about 15 and 20 people. So, and we're monitor, managing 3,000 3, instances in AWS and about six petabytes of storage. So we've got quite a bit of uh, uh, content up there already. And you're on the customer advisory board for New Relic. So I am. You, you mentioned cultural alignment between scripts and, and that vendor, and that's really key. But talk to us about this collaboration, and it sounds maybe bi directional that you're able to maybe influence some of the things and help them make their technologies better. Absolutely. We've got a really good relationship with them. So anytime we have a challenge, you know, one of our current challenges is serverless. You know, as we move, we have a lot of development teams that want to move into serverless. We've been working with the New Relic teams and, and giving feedback to them on what our challenges are with that and how we're monitoring it, because I mean, we've got certain things where I want to be able to monitor those functions in serverless, and I need to give a, a cost back to my stakeholder to say, this is what it costs. It's challenging to do that now, but we're working with the New Relic team to help them uh, deliver some of that 
knowledge to us. Uh, Mark, you hit a hot button for me. So bring, bring us inside, you know, why serverless? You know, what are you hoping to gain from that? You know, I, I've seen New Relic actually has been yeah. tracking for the last couple of years, adoption of containers and serverless. Uh, so. Containers and serverless is kind of the, the new hotness. You know, we've been moving into uh, serverless primarily because it, again, it's that next iteration of speed for us. It makes it even simpler for the developers to get started. It gives them, a, we can give them a standard framework. They can start developing their code and just push deploy and it's running and they don't have to worry about any infrastructure or managing anything. The, the, again, the challenge has been the monitoring part of it, but we're working through that and actually getting pretty good results out of it so far. So you've got about 70% of your consumer facing side is, is on AWS, but you've got some latency sensitive workloads that are still on-prem? 100% of my consumer facing properties are on AWS. Oh, fantastic. So we do have some uh, workloads that are really not designed for cloud. You know, it's our end, use, end financial systems, our, our critical uh, business systems, so it need to be close to those departments. Those actually uh, still live on-premise for us. And, you know, when we started this journey, the on-premise was, it was, a, it was a slow, horrible process, but as we've evolved the cloud, they've evolved that on-premise stuff to keep up with them as well. We're actually looking at you know, some of the other monitoring uh, solutions out there. New Relic has been an option for us to ac actually look at uh, on-premise well, uh, monitoring as well. So, so all the advancements that you guys have achieved in your six year or so translation, transition to cloud that you've talked about, what's next? for scripts? What are some of the maybe new business opportunities that this optimization cost reduction is enabling? Um, so next for us is actually uh, machine learning and AI. We have large initiatives going on that right now where we are trying to uh, analyze our video, analyze our content, you know, lots of it's for to help remove some of the manual processes that we have now because a lot of that stuff when you're delivering to our different partners, there's certain requirements around the video and the only way to do it right now is with eyeballs watching the video. So it's just somebody sitting there watching it for hours and hours a day. We're leveraging some machine learning stuff to actually auto-classify this video, pull out uh, thumbnails for the author so they can put it in their, uh, the metadata awareness for them. And we're doing lots of things with AI. So we're, we're looking for that to be a really hot feature for us in the next couple of years. Excited with what you heard this week from AWS Absolutely. about AI like and ML. The first day keynotes were completely it, it blown away. I mean, they were all things we were looking for. So, Any, Anything specific that you've been waiting for or just not waiting for but got excited by? Um, yeah, there was lots of, the, the Kinesis video streams was actually really good. Um, the video API, I can't, I'm drawing a blank on the exact name of it, but that one actually has some really good features for us because we are looking to do exact things that that one does, where we're looking to pull uh, timestamps out for when stuff shows up in videos and, and provide that back to our end users where they can search and find things in the videos much more quickly. Excellent, well Mark, thanks so much for stopping by theCUBE and sharing what you guys have been doing at Scripps Network no problem. with us. It sounds like you've seen a, a massive transition and you're really, um, have a great foundation to continue going Thank forward. And, and we look forward to continuing to watch great shows on the network. Awesome, thank you guys. And for my co-host Stu Miniman, I'm Lisa Martin. We would thank Mark for stopping by. You're watching theCUBE's continuing coverage from Las Vegas of AWS reInvent 2017. Stick around guys, we'll be right back.